Hi everyone, this is Dee. I just wanted to discuss a question and a statement I received from a concerned viewer regarding a video posted on October the 2nd, 2018 called Escondido High School Senior Students Spell Out N-Word at Picnic. Now, this video was posted by Phil Scott from The Advice Show TV. I also want to examine why Phil Scott chose not to look at the fact that the school is predominantly Hispanic and why he made a conscious decision not to discuss the racial tension that is real and exists between the African American and Hispanic communities. The information I saw pointed out the fact that the students at a California high school spelled out the N-word, which is a racist slur. The online website BuzzFeedNews.com went further to say that they also spelled out the F-word, which is an anti-gay slur. Now, I'm going to leave these links to the video that Phil Scott put out and also to uh, the links to BuzzFeed so you can read this information for yourself. <clears throat> the seniors use their t-shirts to spell out these words and take pictures of their ridiculous behavior at a school-sponsored senior picnic. I know this rant is kind of late in the whole scheme of things, but it is a conversation that needs to be examined and explored because Phil Scott has no problem pointing out when white folks and even black folks show out. But it seems that he may not be as quick to point out the same issue when referencing the Hispanic community. I wonder why. Could that have something to do with the fact that his wife is also Hispanic? Hmm, shaking my head and looking. <laughs> I am definitely giving Phil the side eye twice. Now, as I usually say, I am not going to apologize for anything that I say on my rant because my rant is my opinion on things that I see that are not right. So we're going to take a look at a few facts. Some of the facts that people have to consider when looking at the relationship between Mexicans or and, and, and I'm going to use Mexicans because they're our closest border. Mexicans as well as other Hispanics, but we're going to focus on Mexicans. Many Mexicans feel they are entitled to certain areas uh, in the south part, southern part of the United States, because those states were actually once part of Mexico. Some of these states include Arizona, California, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, and Utah. Now, even though the history books and the internet record that the USA purchased these lands, I don't necessarily trust that information because we know the U.S. government has a history of lying and breaking treaties with the Native Americans from the first day Europeans landed in the Americas. Now, one thing that we got to keep in, in mind is that when you say Native Americans from Canada all the way down to Mexico, those are all Native. At that time, they were all Native American people, even down off into South America, America, you had North America and South America. And when Europeans landed in the Americas, North and South America, there were indigenous people already living here. There were already natives living on these lands. They came in and discovered absolutely nothing. They lie as always. They want to take, um, they want to be the ones to say that they discovered this or they did that, just like they lied about many of the inventions that came out of the South during the, and, and even in the North, many, uh, many inventions that came like the cotton gin, you know, even they say that Thomas Edison didn't invent the light bulb. There are so many different things that Caucasian and Europeans have taken the credit for when they didn't actually invent it. There was a black man or a black woman or some other nationality of person that actually did the work, but the white man took the credit for it. So as I go into this, I want to break some things down because when you see the truth of where people's sense of entitlement comes from, then you understand where the conflict comes from. Most people don't take into consideration that the native tribes 
in what we now call Mexico were much like the native tribes in what we now call the southern parts of the U.S. or even the U.S. period. These people lived off the land, and once they encountered the plague called Europeans, they their whole way of life changed, and their tribal people never fully recovered. When those lands were taken from those people, now we're not gonna, I'm not gonna say everything was taken from those Native American people, but if, if, if we use the Native American people in the United States, our Native American people as a model for how the US government and, and Europeans treated natives back then, we can assume, now I don't like to make assumptions, but we can make a, a reasonable deduction that the way they treated Native Americans back then is the same way they treated those people who are currently in Mexico, their ancestors who were natives. We can we can make a deduction, a reasonable de deduction, that they were also treated the same way. These people were often cheated out of their land. Their land was often stolen. Their whole tribes were decimated and murdered by ca Caucasian or European Americans because they were seeking after wealth, they were seeking after riches, they were seeking after land, and they were trying to enslave people who already lived on those lands. Now, when African Americans or African slaves were brought into these, these lands in North America, South America, you know, in the Americas, when slaves were brought into these lands, Africans were transported to what we now call Mexico and the USA, what we now call the US, as well as further south into other indigenous cultures. Many of these indigenous people had the same attitudes towards African slaves as their white counterparts. Even today, darker Hispanic people deal with far more colorism than what we deal with here in the U.S. because they don't ha always have the social platforms to address the issues suffered by darker skinned Hispanics. I mean, you know, the truth of the matter is the issues with white and black, it, 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 it's, it's broad. It's not just white and black. There are also Asian people who have issues with black people. There are also, you know, uh, Mexicans go on down further into some of the Latin countries and many people want to have an issue with black people as if we did something to them. First of all, Africans did nothing to take their land. We did nothing to them. We were brought here by force. And because we were brought here by force, other n nationalities and other people have a tendency to try to look down on us. But one of the things I'm not going to stand for is this. I don't care what your nationality is. I was born here in the United States of America, so nobody is going to look down on me. I don't care who you are. First of all, that's one of the reasons why I made sure I got plenty of education. Because I want anybody who thinks that they have the chops or the balls to stand up in front of me and try to look down on me. First of all, I'm going to break you down with knowledge. Second of all, I'm going to put you in your place. Just like we were transported here by force, your land was taken by force. So guess what? We're on the same playing field. We ain't nobody no better than anybody else. Also, if we would look at it and be smart about it and join forces and work together, we could actually get more done than working against each other. But people don't think like that. It's easier to fight and, and, and be mad at somebody who's a shade darker than you than to realize that we're all brown and we could actually help each other. That's the reality. But you know, this is the world we live in. You got light-skinned black people who think they're better than dark-skinned, and that's not every light-skinned black person, but it's a lot of them out there. They think they are so much better than a dark-skinned black person. Instead of saying, that's my brother or my sister, and I'm gonna work with them to help them come up, they toot up their nose and walk around like they somebody. But then when they fall down, who do they run to? Do they run to people who are lighter than they are? Or do they run back to the, the black people who were helping them all along? See, that's where the issue lies. What I've learned from living in 
Hispanic communities over the years is that many of them view us in a negative light because of the negative images portrayed to them regarding African Americans in the media because of stories that they've heard that have been handed down from family to family to family. Yes, they believe very badly of the slaves, the black people. Some of them do. Not everybody, but many of them do. And also, um, you know, the, it, the media has a very big part of this to play because they belittle and downgrade and make black, dark skin, or even brown skin, you know, the color of chocolate or even a shade lighter than that. They try to make that look like it's not beautiful, even though everybody, everybody's always trying to tan and try to look a nice golden brown. White people ain't golden brown. <laughs> Most of them are white. So why, where you get the golden brown from? You tan because you you love this brown skin, but you don't want to admit that you love this brown skin. <laughs> Often people come to the U.S. from Hispanic countries with the belief that black people are lazy and ungrateful. They behave and think that they are far more superior to the African American citizens who live here. I'm not saying that this is every Hispanic person, but I myself have encountered many people who really took, I mean, really took the cake, honey. They took the cake in their belief that they were superior to blacks. And I, that's, like I said, that's one of the reasons why I made sure I got my education. Because one of the things that always helped me in life was being able to talk to somebody and break the facts down to them. Not with violence, not with aggression, but with knowledge. Because when, and, and, and yes, uh, com comprende un poquito de español y habla un poquito de espa español también. I learned, I will learn another person's language for the very reason so that they can never, ever, ever sit around and be talking about me, acting stupid towards me, or thumb looking down their nose on me. Yes, yes, I love that. I love that. I love it. Please speak in Spanish and think I don't understand you. Because when I walk up to you and I start speaking to you in Spanish, then you're looking at me crazy. Like, dang, she's been listening to, to us talk crap the whole time. That's one thing. I always tell my kids, wherever you go, you learn the culture, you learn the language. That way you know what's going on. Because I love for somebody to say something negative about me because I'm fixing to show you. Not only I'm, I'm going to break your whole face. I'm going to break your whole face because when I get through breaking this knowledge to you, when I get through showing you what I'm capable of doing, when I show you that I'm one of the hardest working females out there, then you're going to have to pick your mouth, your face, your nose, and everything up off the ground because you're going to realize, ah, oh, man, I was wrong. Yeah, you're going to have to realize that. I'm going to outwork you. I'm going to outthink you. And I'm going to outdo you in everything because that's how I am. See, people have these misconceptions about black people, and it's just up to us as black people to let them know, uh, buddy, you're wrong. Just because somebody told you that black people were lazy, come up here and figure it out for yourself. Every black person is not lazy. Black people are the most industrious, entrepreneurial people you will ever meet. Even a drug dealer on the streets is an entrepreneur. You got to have some kind of brains to get out there and try to get out there and run that game. Now, I'm not promoting that, but I'm speaking the truth. Look it up, ergonom. I mean, look it up, Freakonomics. Look it up, Freakonomics. Look it up, Freakonomics. There are hundreds of billions of dollars being made per year and uh, quite a big chunk of it being paid to the United States government off the back of illegal sale of drugs. Yes, look it up, look it up, look it up. Uh, finally, I will never say that this is everyone in the Hispanic community. I have personally met and worked with some really decent people from different Hispanic countries and different Hispanic cultures who treated me fairly. But for the most part, I have experienced the subtle and sometimes blatant racism of Hispanic people because of their preconceived notion of what black people are and aren't. I lived in Dallas, Texas for 12 years. I raised five children in Dallas, Texas for 12 years. And during that time, 
I had people who really cut for me because I was a hard worker, because they saw me keep my kids in line, because I was, hey, I wasn't out there doing any and everything that everybody was doing. I was raised up in a Pentecostal home. I stayed to myself, I minded my business, I went to school, I worked, and I raised my children. Many times, often during those 12 years, I was by myself. But let me tell you something. I made it a point of not letting anybody be right about me in their negative thoughts or their negative beliefs. I made it a point of getting myself well educated. I made it a point of working hard and taking care of my kids and make sure they had and keeping a roof over our heads and a vehicle or two because I didn't want anybody to put their nasty mouth on me and try to say something negative about me because I'm a black woman with five kids and they want to put me into some little box and then try to assign a stereotype to me. No, thank you. That's not going to happen. I worked really hard to make sure that I didn't fit in anybody's box. I created my own world outside the box. Um, did some? There were a lot of people who had their own preconceived notions about black people. And there, a lot of them really looked down on us. A lot of Hispanic people looked down on black people and thought they were better than me. And I had to break their face. Not physically. But I would break off knowledge and wisdom. I always had a decent job, if not a good paying job, sometimes two. And I kept my kids up and we lived decent. And I made sure my children were respectful. And I made sure that I carried myself as a woman. So when these guys are trying to holler at me and thinking I'm some kind of hoochie coochie mama and I ain't got no sense of responsibility, I will break their face. I will break them down. Dude, I don't want you. You got a wife. You got a Mexican wife in there. You got a, a Salvadorian wife in there. You got a Honduran wife in there. Why are you trying to talk to me? Go talk to your wife. <laughs> I had to break their face. You're not gonna make me look like some whore so you can so your wife can be walking around here with her nose looking crazy at me because you the hoe and because you wanna jump in everything you see. Unfortunately, every black woman didn't do that. But that doesn't mean that every black person is bad because one black girl decides she want to sleep with everybody in the neighborhood. Or because one black guy decides he don't want to work. All he want to do is sit up all day at home and not do nothing. That doesn't, that one person, two, ten people do not stand for the whole community. It doesn't stand for everybody. That would be like saying every Mexican is lazy. Because I've seen lazy Mexicans are dirty because I've seen dirty Mexicans. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that because I know for a fact I've worked with some Mexican people and other Hispanic people from other Hispanic cultures who were some of the hardest working people you would ever work with. Those same people would share their food with you. They would would look out for you. If you needed anything, they would do it. If you needed a tire fix, they got you. If you needed some brakes put on, they got you. If you needed a little help, you know, just help in general, they got you. They watch out for your car, make sure when nobody trying to break in it, especially if you was living in one of them communities where somebody might break in your car. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just going to speak the truth because the truth is what it is. There's good people and there's bad people in every community. But the way that we break down these negative ideas and these thoughts and these beliefs is when we discuss them. We don't hide them. We don't hide them because we got a Mexican wife and we don't want nobody to say nothing about our Mexican wife, Phil Scott from the Advice Show. We break it down. We talk about it. We come to an agreement and we try to work on it and make it better. That's what we do. Now, it's better to go on and talk about how black people are against African people and how uh, white people are against black people. But we ain't got nothing to say about Mexicans and Hispanic people. I guess we don't talk about that, uh, Phil, uh, on the advice show, TV. Uh, I guess we don't talk about that thing. <laughs> Even though those are the ones who were spelling out the N word and spelling out the F word, spelling out the N word to to the black people and the F word to to the to the homosexual people and and lesbians and you know those in the LGBTQ community because that was okay. It's okay for us not to say anything about that. We're not gonna break that down. We're just gonna keep that hid, you know, because we don't want to expose that nasty underbelly of the Hispanic community. 
See, Phil, that's the reason why I keep giving you the side eye. And that's the reason why I keep exposing you every chance I get. Because you're not 100% right. You always pick and choose what you discuss. And you always try to pick and choose stuff that's going to basically make black people mad at white folks or make black people mad at themselves predominantly black men mad at black women but you're not ever going to expose anything that you've done wrong or anything that your wife people have done wrong because you don't want that to affect your nice little nasty mess that you got going on and anyway um I can tell you that racism truly exists in, in the eyes of many Hispanic people based on my own personal experiences. This is not something that somebody told me or shared with me. This is something that I've seen, experienced, lived through, and something that I had to let them know, baby, you got the wrong one. You got the wrong one. Come with it if you want to, because I got some for you. I got it for you all day. Phil Scott from the Advice Show TV had an opportunity to address some of these issues faced between the African-American and Hispanic community. I believe he steered clear of this topic because to discuss this type of truth would further shine the light on the issue that his wife is Hispanic. I believe the real outrage comes from black people. The, the real outrage coming from black people is from the fact that when Phil Scott has an opportunity to be unbiased, he punks out. Because he doesn't want anyone to shine the light on him based on his own commentary. He doesn't really speak the truth regarding black people as a conviction and how he lives his own personal life. He says what black people want to hear so they will continue to fill up his pockets. It's all about the dollars. It's all about YouTube coin. It's all about Patreon. That's all Phil Scott care about. This is my opinion based on my own observation, based on what I'm seeing, based on what he's saying, and the things that are not lining up with his commentary. Phil Scott is, in my humble opinion, a charlatan. A charlatan. The definition of charlatan, C-H-A-R-L-A-T-A-N, a person falsely claiming to have a special knowledge or skill who is a fraud. And the word synonymous with that, a quack, a sham, a fraud, a fake, an imposter, a hoaxer, a cheater, deceiver, double dealer, swindler, froster, and there are many more. You could look this up at dictionary.com yourself if you really wanted to or Wikipedia, or any dictionary site, uh, a definition of charlatan by Merriam-Webster. You know, there's plenty of sites that you can go to and find out the definition. But I wanted to point out what a charlatan really is so that you can see that this black man, this pro-black man, is actually a charlatan. Because basically, he's taking <clears throat> the beliefs of a group of people who really truly are fighting to keep black, black, proud, and beautiful. And he's using those ideas to attract money so that he could sit on his fat behind, get fatter, eat off of people, chomp that money, chop that money. He wants to chop your money. <laughs> he don't mind. He don't mind. That's an African song. Chop that money. He wants to chop your money. <laughs> he want to eat your money. But guess what? I don't have a penny, a dime, a quarter. I don't have nothing for him because he's a liar, in my humble opinion. He should not chime in on black people's issues because he is merely a liar and a two-faced snake looking for any opportunity to bite the black people, either by crook or hook. And that, again, is my humble opinion. Now, once again... As always, when I come with these rants, I'm not coming to be nobody's friend. I'm not coming to be anybody's buddy. I'm coming to point out injustice. I'm coming to point out untruths. I'm coming to point out uh, deception and lies, things that I see on YouTube that I feel need to be pointed out, especially from those people who are higher up, who should be helping the black community and not tearing it down. Silence is just as bad as negative action. Actually, silence is worse. So if you see something going wrong, you see somebody doing something that's wrong and you don't bring it to their attention, you are just as bad as they are. This is another rant in my YouTube gangster series. Once again, I decided to comment 
on some activity I've witnessed in the YouTube universe. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Please do not come to this page thinking you are going to be disrespectful or behave in a ridiculous manner. I don't do foolishness on any level. Period, point blank, exclamation point, and always with a smiley face. Please do not come to this page thinking you are going to bash anyone over here. If I see it, you will be politely escorted out. I expect grown-ups to behave like adults, not like kids. If you don't like the content, thanks for stopping by, but you are not forced to stay. So leave if you feel the need to do so. This is Black Conspiracy TV, BAD TV. Thanks for stopping by and be blessed. Black people, please remember, keep your eyes open and your ears sharp. Good night, guys. Bye-bye.